students, researchers, welcome to video number eight in our video series, Smart PLS video series. In this video, we are going to discuss a very important research issue, which is the CMV, the Common Method Variance. Okay, why CMV is important? If you have a CMV problem in your data, you would end up in inflated relationships between dependent and independent variables between your SEM constructs. And you'll end up as well with data or study or even SEM that's not valid and reliable because the data is reflecting an inflated, if inflated relationship or erroneous, you got error in the relationships between your study variables. So it is very important before stop there, before collecting your quantitative data, it is important to consider or check for CMV. Why? Because there are two remedies that we can follow in order to check for the common method variance, to avoid any biasness or to avoid at least the unacceptable unacceptable level of biasness in your data. How do we do that? Before collecting our data, there are some procedural remedies that we can consider, that we can follow. We can reshape, for instance, our questionnaire. We can use different scales. For instance, instead of having one consistent scale, like one to seven Likert scale for all dependent and independent variables, we can end up having just two or three even types of scales in order just to make a change for the respondents. So respondents just answer more correctly and more fairly, I'd say. This is one example of your uh, procedural remedies that you can do before collecting your data, which is really very important. Because as a PhD student or as a researcher, for instance, if you end up collecting your data, and this may take months to do, and then after your data collection end up with a CMV problem, then you'll be left only with either redoing your uh, questionnaire distribution and recollecting your data or going into the statistical remedies. Okay, statistical remedies may be reliable and may be a solution, but sometimes some of the methods that students may use may not be accepted by some publications, journals or universities. Okay. So it is very important to consider the procedural remedies before data collection. Okay, so we avoid going into the statistical remedies after data collection. However, some students may end up having a CMV and then going into the statistical remedies. In this video, number I, I'm going to introduce you and discuss with you the procedural remedies for CMV problem and what a CMV problem could do and in the next video number nine we are going to dedicate it for only statistical remedies all right let's move to the demonstration now thank you then my fellow students let's keep on with video number eight discussing the common method bias all right so as i mentioned common method bias is a self-reported biasness that may cause an inflation in the relationship between one variable and the other or between the whole variables in your same structural equation model 
So therefore, it is very important before you collect data to design your questions and develop questions or design your questionnaire in a way that will help you avoid CMV problems in your research. So as I mentioned, CMV produces a systematic variation about the true relationship between the scale items. So you end up with a systematic covariation that is above the truthfulness of the relationship. Okay? And then you end up with altered values of the observed correlations and of other relevant indicators. And this may lead to incorrect estimates of your reliability and convergent validity as we discussed in prior videos once we were measuring or checking the validity and reliability of our measurement model. Also, CMV may result in erroneous parameter estimates related to magnitude and the significance of the relationships about, about uh, the whole, in the whole SEM model or in the whole relationships among your constructs, such as those constructs that we have in this video series discussing factors impacting the online banking use. And if you have a CMV problem, you might end up with uh, unreliable, invalid results, and even the model fit may, be, may not be uh, that good. So it is very important at the beginning, before collecting your data, to address the CMV and have proper considerations and reshape your questionnaire, uh, redevelop probably your questions, reconsider the scale uh, of your questions. Uh, it is very important to have uh, significant uh, considerations before, before going and distributing your surveys. Some possible sources, for instance, of CMV might be a single source data collection. This is when you, for instance, ask uh, uh, the same respondents about their attitudes, and then you ask them themselves about how they evaluate their attitudes. So from the same source, you are getting uh, almost uh, data that has to be uh, independent, that has to be separated, like Students cannot probably evaluate their attitudes as well as describe their attitudes. They may, evaluate, they may describe, but someone else may evaluate. So single source data is an issue, uh, so they should be different. Uh, however, I don't know, sometimes researchers may like the time, but I don't agree. No, we have to shape up our questionnaire very well before starting collecting our data because once you go and collect your data and then you end up with a CMV, it's much harder. So just better take care first, then go to treatment later on. All right. A long questionnaire as well, a long questionnaire instrument. Uh, may end up uh, or be a cause of a CMV because once you get into a long questionnaire, they would require substantial time from the respondents. Respondents may get kind of like uh, tired, luggish, may just feel bored, and they just end up just filling any questions, any answers, especially if you have one scale that goes, for instance, from one to seven, from the beginning till the end of the questionnaire, they just get used and just yell, okay? Go in and, and, and answer the question same way, all right? And then they may end up at the end not even reading, not even reading because they get tired. So this sort of questionnaire may, may, should be well considered, actually. A long questionnaire is not uh, recommended 
All right, so we have to consider the questionnaire and avoid long questionnaires. Respondents as well, sometimes if you are, for instance, researching a specific topic, Respondents may have some presumptions, they may have some peer pressure, background knowledge, etc., and they just end up uh, putting their answers quickly and maybe in a biased way. And if they do that, you end up with a CMV. How do we deal with CMV? If you haven't collected your data yet, stop there, don't. Okay, you have to watch video number eight and video num coming video number nine. It is very important, trust me. Trust me on that. It is very important to watch video number eight and video number nine before collecting your data. And trust me, I am saving you lots of hassles on that. I am saving you lots of hassles on that. All right? Okay, how do we deal with it? Dealing with CMV, it's, it's like taking care before getting sick and then going at treatment after getting sick. All right, so we have the procedural remedies. So this is taking care before you get sick, which is very easy and much easier and much cheaper and much uh, less time consuming. So those are the procedural remedies. Statistical remedies, you got sick and you got the treatment. All right, so let's go first to the procedural remedies before I distribute my data while I develop my questionnaire I consider that trust me in my PhD no one has like uh, my supervisors helped helped me a lot but sometimes I didn't pay attention to to those details I end up paying the price at the end because I had to to redo stuff and this takes lots of time okay and it gets a bit not even motivating to redo some stuff, all right? So how do we deal with the CMV? Okay, so we have some preventive measures, okay, or ex post statistical techniques. Preventive, procedural remedies, or statistical techniques. In this video, we're going to address only the preventive remedies in the coming video, we'll dedicate it only to statistical techniques. Okay, so for preventive remedies before collecting your data, one good option would be to just gather your data from multiple sources. So you do not rely only on one source. This is one. Okay, you prevent misinterpreting a scale of item and reducing random responses. So to do that in order you have to, it is recommended to make the wording of the questions clear, concise, and precise. You got to define and illustrate the unfamiliar or complex concepts with examples. So once you make it clear to your respondents through clear cut, concise uh, survey questions, you end up making it easier for your respondents to answer precisely and answer without bias. Adapt to the scale of items to the focal context of the study, all right? So maybe you are studying, you got any psychology research or whatever, information system research or whatever, like make a kind of like uh, adapt the scale you use, okay, scale items. 1 to 5, 1 to 7, 1 to 4, 1 to 8, those scale items to your specific area or discipline of study. These are three uh, ways that you may follow in order to prevent misinterpreting the scale items and uh, reducing the random responses. Provide your respondents actually with a guaranteed anonymity. So just their name is not known. Give them a guarantee that there are no correct or incorrect answer. Just feel free to, to answer uh, objectively, as objectively as possible. Change question orders. If you feel like those questions are following the same sequence, 
and they may lead to CMV or biasness, just change the order. Spatially separate the scale items. Separate the dependent from the independent variables. Group them. Make categories. Separate the questions. These are all good ways to minimize the occurrence of CMV. Uh, as well, inclusion of both positively and negatively worded items for the same scale may, may help preventing extreme responses and acquiescence or disacquiescence response style biasness. You got to reduce common scale properties by reversing wording of some scale items, presenting scale items in diverse formats. Just make a change. Make a change. Don't be consistent throughout your questionnaire. Maybe change colors. Maybe change headings. Group things together. Just create differences. Create different themes in your questionnaire. These are good preventive measures to avoid occurrence of CMVs. So in your data collection, separate, for instance, dependent from independent variables. We got psychological separation. You got while, while doing your questionnaire, you can, for instance, ask a question. And if there is consistency among questions, just ask something else. Okay, something in between. Use different scales, as I mentioned. Group items, give headers, use colors, etc., etc. These are the preventive measures that we can use in order to avoid CMV in our research. All right, uh, students, researchers. These are really important. Uh, and uh, if you understand those preventive remedies and uh, just watch out for them before collecting your data, you may not need the statistical remedies and you may end up with data collected that has no CMV or the CMV level in the data is acceptable. So in the, because in any journal uh, these days, or even for your supervisors for a PhD thesis, you get to, you get to tackle the CMV. You get to explain. You might be questioned about this, the CMV, uh, what you did with it and how you dealt with CMV in your data collection, because, um, if you don't, you end up with an with a unreliable study, and we don't want to get into that. So, you paid attention to those, maybe you're only into preventive. You didn't pay attention to those, and you end up with a CMV anyways, then we get into the statistical remedies. Statistical remedies may be many. Some of them just detect CMV, some of them require knowing the potential sources of CMV. Some of them measure CMV and eliminate its effects. All right, so, so, so it all depends what method we may use. We may end up using a method to detect it and then a method to measure it and just remedy it or eliminate it. And these methods are numerous. I get those from a study by Rodriguez Ardura and Mesegi Artola, uh, it's a fresh study, 2020. Uh, those, uh, this table is, uh, let me, um, uh, slideshow from current slide. Let me just, all right, let me zoom in further. All right, okay. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight eight uh, statistical remedies. For instance, if we get this famous Harman single factor test, uh, uh, it detects CMV. Uh, it does not require knowing potential sources. However, it does not measure and eliminate it. Okay. If you need it to measure and eliminate it, then this is not the good uh, method to follow. However, Directly measured latent factor method, it does the three things together and also this one and this one. So we got one, two, we got eight, 
we got eight methods or statistical remedies or methods that we can use in order to detect CMV, to check whether we require knowing the potential sources, to measure our CMV in the, the collected data, and to take the proper actions. All right. Uh, in conclusion, CMV can be a problem. We have to consider, I'd say, and I recommend considering before getting into distributing your questionnaire. Otherwise, you're left with the statistical remedies. In order to have a valid and reliable data collected and thus a reliable and valid structural equation model, it is important to consider for CMV. Next video, number nine, we will demonstrate how to do using Excel or Smart PLS or SPSS in order to address the CMV problem in a statistical way. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the coming video. Bye bye for now.